Hello and welcome back. This is going to be a catch and cook spade fish fishing video. I'm going to show you the rigs we use, how to tie them up. I'm going to show you pretty much everything. How to cook them up after you catch them on the grill and how to put a lemon to spade fish in your cooler. Hit that subscribe button down there. Check this out. All right, here's some of the important stuff you're going to need. The pack's empty, but that is a pack of number two Gamagatsu octopus hooks, the red ones. That is this hook right here. It's a small hook, as you can tell from my fingertips. Spadefish have a very small mouth, and you don't want to use too big a hook. Smaller the better. You need some 20-pound vanish fluorocarbon or some other kind of fluorocarbon. A release float. This is very important. Let me show you how this works. This clips over your line, and then this end has these two rubber grommets that you pinch your line in, so when the fish hits, it'll pull that line out. I'll show you how that works here in just a minute. And a couple of split shots. Number seven, number eight, number six split shots to go on your line to hold everything down. Also, you'll see this in use on Evan's rod. It is a simple double dropper bottom rig with a couple of leadered hooks, the same Gamagatsu hooks with about a foot to 14 inch long leader tied on. That works great, little one ounce sinker right off the side of the boat. Gives you another line in the water at the proper depth that you can set and change up on the fly. Very good way to catch them. All right, so everybody pretty much knows how a bottom rig works. This is just that number two hook on about a two to three foot, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, with a little surgeon's loop tied in end. Nothing spectacular, pretty simple to tie. We rig these up, tie them around a swim noodle to keep them handy and ready to go for if you get one broke off. A lot of times a bluefish will bite you off or you might catch something like a ribbon fish or something like that, just tear up everything and you'll need another one. So you should have several of these handy. Pretty simple, really. You just hook it to your swivel. The swivel won't bother the fish. Put that on there. Now, we were running these things about 10 feet deep. You need to determine where your fish are. Sometimes they're near the surface, sometimes they're deep. So you've got to figure out how deep they are and present your bait down there with them. We were using bits of clam. You put a split shot or two right above your swivel, not down by your hook, and set your bobber. And I'll show you how you do that now. Well, if the fish are 10 feet down, how do you judge what's 10 feet? Well, look at the length of your fishing rod. This is six foot six. So pretty much you know the length of the rod. Six is about seven feet. So if I add three feet to the tip, that's gonna be 10 foot, right? One, two, three, all right? Now I go to the rod tip. That's where I'm gonna set this float up. Pull that some extra line. Now I'll show you how this float works. First thing you do is open up the little catch. It's like a snap swivel that's hard to see. There you go. Open. Put that around your line. So that part will slide. Now, pinch open those two little rubber stoppers, put that line in there like that. So now your float's going to be this way. It'll sit in the water like that. And when the fish hits, it falls free to the hook. So you don't have to reel in all the way to the bobber and then hand line the rest. Great little rig, real easy to use and definitely want to pick yourself up a bunch of these release bobbers. They just go down to the swivel and you can land your fish. Don't forget to give me that thumbs up like button down there. You might have seen this trick from some of my other rigging videos. You can take your rigs, put them on a swim noodle with a car auto body pin stuck in it. It gives you something to kind of tuck your line under there. And you can wrap these things up like this and they'll be ready to fish. We usually keep several of these on hand with the rigs we're going to be using during that day. Handy, ready to go, won't get tangled up in your tackle box. Let's go fishing. Morning two, me and Eva heading out. Another little father-son trip. See if we can't grab some spade fish, maybe a few Spanish. If we're lucky, a few more flounder. <laughs> You want the net? Hey, there you go. One potato. <laughs> Swing him. You can do it. There you go. 
<laughs> That's a double right there. Look, we're here. Tap, tap. Where's that very line stick now? Nope, not a blue fish. Not a blue fish. Sure. You want that? He's on there. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Net that one? Swing him in the boat. We'll keep that one and let the little one go. There we go. Nicely done. We got us a lemon of spade fish. Heading back to the dock, back to the barn. These are clean, boned, rinsed off, and patted dry just to make sure we get all the last scales and bones out of them. And we're just going to put them on this pan and season them up and get them ready for the grill. Now you can use just about anything. I like to use olive oil cooking spray. Works just fine. Put a little bit of that on there. There we go. And Old Bay. Pretty simple stuff. Put a little bay on there, get the grill hot. Spade fresh is pretty mild, so you don't need a whole lot of seasoning on it. And we're good to go. Come on now, you seriously didn't think I forgot, did you? The thinner the fish, the hotter you want to have your grill. You want to cook them hot and fast. If it's a thick piece of fish, then maybe not as hot and slow it down a little so it still gets done in the middle without drying out the outside. But for these delicate fillets, hot and fast is the way to go. I'm looking for between 450 and 500. All right, let's get these babies on. Not a bad idea to hit your grates a little bit before you drop those fish on there too. All right, listen, that's sizzling. So we're just going to do these real quick on each side, just a little bit, just a couple of minutes. And on the first side, we're going to flip them relatively quickly so the fillets don't fall apart on us. If you cook them too much before the flip, you have a hard time flipping them without them falling apart. Especially these little, little belly pieces. Alright, we'll do that in just a minute. These things have been on maybe one or two minutes and that's it. You don't want to leave them on long or when you flip them, they'll break apart. Like I said, just get in there and turn them over. 
And you can see they're cooking really fast, which is good. Those grill grates give it those perfect sear marks and do a great job of cooking any fish. There you go. Just about another minute on there. And the babies will be done. Yep, that ought about do it. I bet that fish hasn't been on four minutes total. And they are going to be fantastic. Spade fish is one of the best eaten fish Chesapeake Bay has. And it's available offshore from most, at least of the southern states anyway. Easy to clean, easy and fun to catch, and just absolutely wonderful table fare. That's the spice side there. See it? Quick and easy, does not get much better than that. So there you go, hope you guys like that. Let me know in the comments below if you did. Make sure you check out in the cards up there how to clean spade fish, I'll show you how to clean these fish. Hit that subscribe button, check out some other videos while you're here. We'll see you next time.